So I was just leading off by saying that we're here today to listen, yep. to write down questions or thoughts, concerns, do some um, research, and get back to everybody. And Bill would like to go first. You certainly can. Um, I've seen the goings on in uh, front porch forum. You can talk to some of the guys. And um, you mean talk to some of the guys? You mean the crew? Yes, okay. gentlemen who work for us. Um, since 2011, 10 people have left the town garage. Um, seven, three, three are for retirement, and one came back. That's Eddie. But, but you know, seven in 10 years—that's a lot of people. Um, I'm not sure of the reasons, but I match some of it's money. And uh, what these guys go through with uh, working on our roads, being on call in the winter, plowing at two o'clock in the morning, and just the skills that they have, <coughs> the excavator, the grader, and they gotta drive trucks all day now because we have to go all, way out of the way to get dirt, and, uh, or gravel, or whatever you wanna call it. Um, and I understand the argument about benefits and but when it comes down to money in their pocket and they see that not, not going up or going down, that's what they need, you know, they need to talk about that. I can't talk about that for them, but for me, that would bother me as well. Um, the union negotiation thing, I don't, I don't know much about it. It's just that it's a shame that had to come that far, that we couldn't figure it out without it. Um, I don't say that I respect these guys greatly and what, what they do. Okay, thank you, Bill. Who wants to go next? I, I might just as well go. I gotta go at some point. Uh, my name's uh, Don Singleton. Uh, I used to be a road foreman here a good many years ago. I remember that. And I got a pretty good idea of what's going on now because uh, they got about six months that, that is really rough on them there starting November right through the 1st of May. It's not a picnic. It's uh, when that deal you sacrifice a lot. You, you give up <coughs> you give up birthday parties, you, you give up a lot of things. Thanksgiving, possibly, Christmas, New Year's, Easter, the list goes on. And you got kids, uh, you miss out on a lot of school functions. And uh, they, 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 give, they give a lot. You know, it's not like uh, the best job in the world, and I think they should be rewarded for what they're doing. And I don't think they've been rewarded financially. I think they got some benefits here, but it, you can't eat the benefits. Uh, it's pretty hard to live on benefits. <coughs> but uh, but I, I'd like to see your slick board shut down, really lift things over. <coughs> Five, five people on the select board, and, <coughs> and they're, they're pretty much running the show. Select board should be, and uh, I, I think I think it can be worked out. Might be able to keep people here instead of having them leave and going to Barry Town or City of Barry or City of Montpelier with better, better benefits. I'd like to see them stay here. I, I think it'd be real important to keep everyone here just as long as we can. I was lucky when I was here, probably seven years, I only lost one guy, and that was due to retirement. And uh, that was a big deal. I didn't have to train anybody. And uh, I, I think we can make things better here. If, if we want to do it, get a little bit more money. <coughs> and uh, I don't think money's a big deal. I, I think they well worth keeping these guys around for it. You know, just as long as we possibly keep them. They wouldn't have been out looking for a union if everything was all rosy and hunky dory and it weren't. And so they went for a union, which I don't, I don't blame them. I'm fit for doing this. I'm glad they did it. I, I don't, I don't have much else to say. But if anybody's got any questions, they're welcome to ask me. Okay. Thank you, Don. Richard, do you want to go next? I'm here to support them. I didn't have anything particular to say. Okay. Um, okay. Let's start with Jacob. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so I had given my two weeks notice. 
Uh, last Thursday, I was offered in those positions somewhere else, not road crew. Um, and it's uh, more like housing opportunities for me too, so it's not, you know, I'd love to stay here, but it's not, <coughs> it's with family stuff and kids, it's just not working out. Did you say housing, like you're going to build a house, or housing for you? Uh, I'm not really sure yet. <clears throat> oh, okay. Because I did see a post on Front Porch Forum from, is it Ashley? Yeah. That said you were looking for housing. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Uh, well, yeah, I w actually, I, I hope that's not it. Jacob, is there, so just the reason we're here is to is to hear from the crew and i i know that you're leaving but if you could maybe just put yourselves back in the shoes you're still in the shoes of being a callous road crew and speak to us from that perspective that would be great yeah um so when i started here i had no experience doing anything um and so bruce alvi and they all trained me on everything i mean that's where i got all my skills from and for them to be at the low wages they are, um, it's kind of not fair to them. Bruce has been doing it his whole life pretty much. Alfie yeah, has too. Uh, Tyler, you're pretty good on machines. Um, I just don't see how it's worth what I'm getting right now. I really don't know what to say about it. Okay. Bruce? Uh, where to begin? Yeah, um, done this type of work all my life, 40 something years of it. Um, I should be judged on the quality of work I do, my work ethics. I mean, go out and look at roads and the roads that I've created since Frost went out haven't been needed to be retouched. Um, Look at Marshall Road, look at the ditching, and you know, I, I like leaving the job looking good, and I do it efficiently, and, and I cannot stand to leave it looking ratty. I, I do a good job, I think. Um, Uh, these, the surrounding towns are, are paying much better and, and uh, I asked you to see what the difference is between our health insurance and, and the next one down, which other towns are providing. And, you mean, and wait a minute, when you say health insurance and the next one down, you mean the... Uh, the our health insurance plan yep. and, and the gold compared to the platinum, the difference annually per person is, mm -hmm. is uh, very minimal compared to the wage difference is, is great. It's, uh, so and, you and most of the other insurances that the towns are providing elsewhere are comparable to ours. It's the health insurance that we keep bragging about, and it's, what is it, $1,500 difference? I don't know, but annually, mm -hmm. per person. So that's not enough to support and, us. And you know that the town has an HSA, so that there's, no out-of-pocket expense to an employee for medications, uh, hospital visits, any of that. So regardless of what plan you have, the HSA covers anything out-of-pocket. So you never have to have anything out-of-pocket. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to be sure. Um, as for these other numbers, uh, I made $23,000 last year. The, the lowest paid regular worker in, in East Montpelier made forty-eight six. Sid, whose place I took, I came and he went to Cabot, he made fifty-seven three. Okay, so, so lowest paid in East Montpelier is how much did you say, 48? 48 six is what it says in the county report. Okay. And what was the other one? Sid, oh, Patrick. Sid, yeah, I remember Sid. Yeah, he made 57.3 last year. And, okay. you know, 
$14,000 under that. And he's where? Cabot. Cabot? Yeah. Cabot's going to be higher anyway because there's a, a creamery, but still. It's, yeah. It's a big, big difference. And they're much I, larger. I mean, and they're much a, larger sized towns than Calus. Well, not we got tougher roads though, too. Oh. And, and the road I'm talking about people. The number of people. Well, that's a, that's uh, uh, the miles of road, which is what we're responsible for. There's not many towns that carry those there. No, Same I know way. that. Yeah. Same size roads, way more tougher roads to do. Mostly, I, I think you should be looking at my, my skills and, and what, what I do with this town is, is above average. This guy in this one player that I was talking about, 848.6, he doesn't even run greater. He doesn't know how to run greater. So, okay. It's a huge difference. So he has no, no greater? Okay. Did you do this type of work before you came here? Wait, yes or no? I missed it. I was writing notes. That was a no. No, okay. No, he, he grew up on a farm, and I always said that farmers should be the ones to hire to do this kind of work because they run equipment oh, yeah. and mechanics. And, and yeah, it's they, great they, experience. They, they fit right in easy. Yeah, yeah, because your dad did. the concerns of the crew, basically. Yeah. Well, I have a good crew here. And yeah, I've I put many good crews together here. Mm -hmm. And you can ask any one person that's left this building why they left. It's not because Alfie is a bad manager, because Alfie is a bad person, because Alfie, they're not leaving because of Alfie. They're leaving most of them because of money. Couple of yes have left because of because of retirement and just moving on into future things in their life. But the majority of the people that have left here is because of money. Okay. Uh, Jim, which was a very close friend of mine, worked for me both in my private world and, and here. He left for Barry Town. And he was getting two or three dollars more an hour when he left. Very similar benefit package. He just he just couldn't stand to stay here anymore. He was driving. He had a three minute drive to get to here. He chose to go 15 minutes to get to Barry Town. So it's just it's always goes back to money. And I have to say I've been asking the select board to give some more money to these guys so they can keep them. And Back to what, what Junior said. It's a lot of work to train people. It's not just okay, let's start and let's you know put your boots on, let's go. It's not that. You gotta you gotta teach them how to do the machines, how to work on the machines, how to go up a hill when, when it's slippery, icy, stormy, how to take care of your chains. There's a lot going on here for, for somebody that hasn't done it. Mm -hmm. And it always comes back to Alfie because I'm the one that's been in charge here. So, I'm just going to say that it's a lot of work to train people, and I am getting tired of it. I'm just getting tired of it. It's just, you guys don't see it because you don't do it. You don't see what it takes to train these young guys, these young people, these, these not even necessarily young guys, people that just haven't done this line of work. Okay. And I need you guys to know how difficult that is. It's not easy. So, 
if it's money, if it's if it's newer equipment, whatever it is, we got to do something to keep more help here. We're down one right now. You guys keep talking about a fifth guy. That makes us down two guys. Um, well, we, we did the fifth person based on hearing the need for more help. Absolutely. And, and that, well, actually, it kicks in tomorrow. So tomorrow's July 1st. Right. But here's another problem I have. I get no communication with the select board. Zero. You're asking me to manage this place, and you don't talk to me. I don't I haven't heard this. You guys said that you put money into the budget. Shouldn't we be advertising for that fifth person before now? Well, that's your role. You have to tell me that that's going to happen. All you said to me is, yep, we put money in the budget for the fifth person. Yeah, and it does. I, Alfred, let's, let's not, um, I, my recollection is we did have a conversation about this at a select board meeting and that we did authorize you and tell you that it was coming and authorize you to post the position. Um, I'll go back and find the minutes. I would love to see those minutes yeah. because it, it was either it was a Zoom meeting, which is then very difficult for not only me, uh, but somehow I missed that. Okay, well, we can go back and find it in the minutes. I mean, if, if it's supposed to, that fifth person is supposed to start tomorrow, we should have been advertising a month ago or more. Well, I mean, you knew that the fifth person was authorized by the board by the budget and the budget passed. And I will go back and find the minutes where we talked about Great. the fifth I person. Look forward to seeing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I don't think this meeting is about, is not giving me the opportunity to vent on everything, because I have a lot, and I don't want to waste everybody's time. Well, maybe there's a meeting that you should have with the select board I separate. Think, yeah, and Denise, I tried setting that up. You and Cliff came here a couple of times, a couple of meetings, yeah. and I just fell to the wayside. Well, we try, and my recollection from my side of things is we tried to schedule some additional meetings and people weren't available. Mm -hmm. I walk in this building every day. I'm available. Okay, if, if, the weather, if the roads are in need of help, Alfie's here. So it's not that Alfie wasn't available, so don't begin to say that. I, I make myself available. Alfred, I'm going to I'm going to stop you. Um, a, we're a volunteer board. B, Denise and Cliff are just two people. We're not the whole board. S uh, over and over and over, we have asked you to come to select board regularly. We've asked you to let you, us know when you have items that you want to bring before the board. I'm just going to come right back at you. There are times when you don't show up. There are times you come up, you come with things that you haven't you haven't briefed us on ahead of time. We have no material. There, there's a lot that is broken, and it is not just on the select board side. It is something we need to work on together, but I, I, I don't want to just let the record sit with that there's only one side of this. That is absolutely not the case. I'm not saying that it is. Well, your I'm tone, your that tones, a your tone. With, with communication. Right, but, that, your, but your tone and the way. I'm you're sorry, talking. I get worked up. Right, that's, but that's just a remember. Weakness that I have. So, so you need to work on that. And I've always said, if you have something for the agenda, let me know by Thursday. I rarely hear anything that you have. Sometimes I ask, should this be on the agenda? Should this curb cut, have you looked at this curb cut? I mean, whatever it is, communication works both ways. And I will try to do better from, from, from me on communication. But as it's, I said, it works both ways in a respectful, Conversation, a respectful tone of voice is really helpful. Yep, I am working hard on that. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah. So, one more thing that I want to get off of my chest okay. is this whole union thing. I had absolutely nothing to do with it, start to finish. And for a year and a half, I was in the office in the dark, couldn't talk to my guys because the select board told me not to talk to my guys about benefits, about wages, about any of that stuff. I honored that, I didn't talk. But how can I operate this place not knowing what side I'm on? I can't be on my guy's side. Select board kept me in the dark. Never and once invited me, never once invited me to a meeting to talk about the union, what's going on with the union, where we are. 
you guys were trying to decide on different things that's going to affect this building and, and what goes on in this building. But I was never invited once, never once invited to any of those union meetings. Now I get there's laws about that. I understand that. But me as a manager, I need to be on one side or the other. Alfred, let's start. That's not the whole story. That's not the whole story. You were involved in the beginning. You then took a three or four month leave, which the board approved. Yes, and then I and came then, back. And then you came the back, and a lot of things had happened with the union to that point. I still carried my position. I still I should have been into the conversation. You could have briefed me. You could have caught me right up on what happened while I was gone. But I was in the dark, and I'm still in the dark. Well, you know, you're so not in the dark anymore. So if you want me to manage this, you've got to let me on I one side or the other. I don't think you're together. in the dark any more than, than we are. We were surprised when we found out the union chose to decertify. We didn't know. We didn't see it coming. We were ready to sign the contract. Well, yeah, again, that's that. I wasn't involved in that. But I'm talking about the whole time, the year and a half that meetings were taking place. Alfie was not involved in it. Alfie was told that he couldn't talk to those guys. That's I'm sorry, that puts me in a That's difficult not true. situation. That's not true. That's not true. Let's stop this it right is, now. Sharon, that is it's not very true. true. You guys told me at several meetings that I couldn't talk to my guys about this this stuff. So I don't think today we want to get into okay, well, an, that's argument, start, that's an argument, an argument back and forth. But there's another whole side to the story, which unfortunately people don't hear, because right, we as a I'm, because we as a board are not able to post things and respond and look to criticisms and things like that um, that anybody else can really do on front porch forum um, it's we have we operate as a board we have to make decisions as a board not just make not just make decisions we we don't just make decisions as a board we communicate as a board the select board is elected five of us individually to work together the the only authority we have is together one of us as a voice has no authority unless the board has specifically authorized that communication so you know so so even that I think is not very well understood. If somebody sends an email to one of us and you get a response that feels weak, it's because one of us is not authorized to say anything on behalf of the board. It is a board issue. The other thing is, and I think Denise just said that, there, there's other sides to the story and there are also other points of view in town. We are, we are here to hear you guys, and, and I, one of the things I want to urge us to do is I think it is important for people to air what's on their minds, um, it's, it's, but it's, it's more important that we consider how we can move, how to move forward productively. And um, that, yeah, that's, that's some, some of the going back and trying to, trying to ex, you know, exchange what happened when and who said what, really not, right. really it's not, not productive. Really not, not productive. Not productive. I understand that. And another thing too is the board, the volunteer board, meets twice a month, normally, unless there's some issue like today where we do a special meeting and we have a very full agenda every single time we meet. And I've always given the operations manager and the road crew and the road commissioner time at the beginning of the agenda so that you don't have to stay late. Sometimes you choose to stay on your own time um, and that's fine, it's a public meeting. If there's an issue, you have to bring it to the attention of the board so we can put it on the agenda. We cannot have a communication on email and make decisions. We can't do that. That's illegal. That violates the open meeting law. Yeah, I'm not asking you to do that. Okay. Bruce, you heard something else? Um, as long as I have been here, the select board has never asked us 
how we think about any issue at all. You have always imposed this or imposed this, uh, I mean, the, the rate of, we pay for health insurance, the wages, um, the, uh, anything, the, the select board has always imposed them on us without asking us. Um, we, we have no communication with the select board at all. It's never happened, as long as I've been here, except for your meeting to tell us how good we've got it, which obviously we, we didn't need a meeting to tell us that we had it bad. <laughs> You tried to tell us exactly you had it good, and obviously you don't need to have a meeting to tell us how good we've done it. If we had it good, we'd, we'd know it already. Uh, but just, all these things just thrown on us without talk. Okay, that's fair. We can do a better job of, of having regular meetings with you. That's fair. Anything else anybody wants to comment on? So when you say... I, I think it's budget time. You, you ought to get these guys together at select board and kind of have a nice talk with each other, keep it civil and uh, see what they need and get some communication going back and forth. And uh, I, th I think that would help a lot. I don't think these guys have been getting any good feedback from, from select board. Good, good or not good? Uh, it's not going to hurt anything, that's for yeah. sure. But, but you, you, you're going to get a budget every year. You come up with a budget. Well, and to be and to be clear, we always ask we ask Toby and Alfred right. about yeah, budget well, every year. I and I figure, and I think Alfred is the manager. I, yeah, yeah. I suppose it could work that way, but I think it worked better if we got everybody involved with it. You know, I. I'm not pointing the finger at Alfred for not communicating with him. I think he's been trying, but I don't, I'm not sure how much he's been communicating with Alfred. And, uh, I think it'd be good to get them all yeah. together. Mm -hmm. No, I said that's fair. Yeah, that's I fair. I think that's fair. But, yeah. but, but to, you know, just, just to be clear, the select board doesn't on its own develop the highway budget. It comes from, it comes from Toby. Alfred and Toby. Right. And then, it, you know. As far as I can figure, it's up to people in management. So, that's correct. Seven? Seven. Seven, Alfred and Toby. Five people on the select board. So, yeah. so that would be three. Because the board agree, does a budget together and agrees and votes on a budget. So that's one. It's five persons, but one one, one, one voice. One decision, <laughs> one voice. Yeah. Um. So just, just to clarify, this past budget I was told not to put anything in the salary line by the select board. So essentially, any recommendations, you, I'm having a hard any time. recommendations I might have had for the budget and for the salary for the road crew was not coming from me or Alfred. Okay. We were told not to put a number in there in the budget that we submitted to the select board. That that is that is correct. And when we were developing the budget, we were still in union negotiations. Right. So, so we didn't know. Yep, so Toby Toby is right. It it didn't come from Toby and Alfred because because we were negotiating with the union. Yep. Yep, that's true. We were negotiating and we didn't know at the time. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Uh, all right. There, clearly there's a problem here, right? I mean, can we all admit that? I think that I, mean, I, did, I didn't put this petition out. I had nothing to do with that. That's the reason why we're sitting in this room right now. Is the petition? No, it's not. And the reason that that Bruce brought up is his concerns. The reason we're sitting in this room right now is because we sent a memo to the road crew and to the road crew about the retroactive pay that we gave them, and we said in that memo that we wanted to come up with a time 
to meet with the crew. And some, I don't know if they passed in the night or what, but we had already put out the memo saying we wanted to meet with the crew before the petition went out. Right, mm -hmm. so um, mm -hmm. about that memo, this is another thing that bugs me. I didn't get that memo. I never got that memo until one of the guys showed me theirs. That's that was, fair. That was two or three weeks away later. I think now, why can't I get that any sort of document like that you the day after the meeting or the day, you know, the same, at least the same day that my guys get it? Yep, you're fair. That's fair. That That's is fair. That is absolutely fair. That is absolutely fair. Yeah. That is that is fair. And if you didn't get it, I apologize. Yep. Well, I, I didn't get it. Okay. So right. you, you could you could have said to me you could have said you could have said you could have sent me a very nice email. Said, hey, Denise, could you send me the memo that you sent right. to the that crew? That was the only thing. That would have been fine. But it's not. It's been two years going on. That uh, Alfred, we, I, I am talking. Star. I am talking about this one specific issue where you said you didn't get the memo. You could have very nicely called me, sent me an email, and said, hey, could I get a copy of the memo? And I would have said, geez, sure, I'm sorry, I forgot to send it to you. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that I think is... is, is, is was brought up, so I'm saying I just didn't get it for like three weeks beyond. Okay, and I said I apologize, and that you could have emailed me, and I would have said, geez, I'm sorry, yeah, I Alfred. I could have done and a lot I could, of things. Well, yeah, you I could have. I have done a lot of things. You're not hearing me. Okay. Um, so the memo that we're talking about, and I think this is this is a good thing to illuminate. It's in all. It's in the recent select board minutes. But during the union negotiation, and and a lot of you have, if you've ever been in any any no negotiation, you know that there is kind of constantly this sense that you're almost done. You're almost done. Um, and and there's a lot of rules that we learned that we learned but we didn't understand walking in one of which is um and i i'm not even going to try to re, to write recite why but we didn't it is it is true that we did not last year award on july 1st on july 1 at the beginning of the fiscal year we did not give a, a salary increase to the road crew because we were in negotiations about what the 2020 2021 fiscal year rate would be so um, and and because the negotiations kept going and going and going and going um, they didn't get an increase that otherwise without those negotiations they would have had beginning July 1 a year ago so as soon as we learned that the the union was decertifying, which is another way of saying they, they withdrew from representing in Calus. Um, we, the select board, met and and awarded retroactively an right. increase effective July one. That is the same as that is the you know the same as everybody else got. Um, everybody else being. You know, a very small group of people, yeah. but still, the road commissioner and the office staff. Yeah. Um, so, when Bruce says he hasn't hadn't had an increase, that is true, and that is why. And now it has been made retroactively, and you know we're heading into July one of a new fiscal year, and so it's you know we met recently again to talk about what is the what is the increase that we are are offering to. Uh, staff effective July 1 of this year and just to be clear we were we were advised by our consultant to withhold the increase last July 1st as part yeah. of the, a part of, as part of the negotiations because we had no I never done negotiations before ever so right. it was all I think it was new to almost everybody on the board how negotiations worked so um, we're, we're talking three years. That I can show you a paycheck from three years ago that's higher than, than my paycheck before you gave me the 46 cents, which was, was just a slap in the face because uh, 46 cents to make up for three years is nothing. It doesn't even, it hardly covers the. We're talking three years. And, and I'd, be curious to, I'd be curious. I'd be curious to see why that is. And you brought me up to 2020. That's that's 
nothing compared to, to what I should be making. And uh, what do you think you should be making? Well, the, the union told you initially that I should be making twenty-four ninety-five an hour with my forty hours of experience. And like I said again, go look at the work that I do. Look, it's high quality work. Uh, and immediately, the first meeting, you bumped it down to twenty-three, and I didn't argue. But but that never changed. All through the new negotiations, it, it, it never changed. It was always a 23, but you kept adding on your, your little policies and, and proposed uh, increasing the health insurance, employee pay, and all these things that were kept adding on to your end, and there was, there was, there was no compromise. It was always you were adding your things on, and no there was no difference in, in what we were making. But, uh, that 46 cents was another slap in the face, and now on your last meeting, you're talking about um, consumer price index, and that's 2.1%, and and 2.1% of a low wage is always going to be a low wage. It, it, you need a base figure that's comparable, and then annually it's 2.1%. That's that's how that works. If you go 2.1% off a low wage, it's always a low wage. It, it, it'll never work. And that's what you're talking about now. It'll, it'll, it's just nowhere near what we should be doing. Well, you know, negotiations, from what I learned, is nobody ever gets anything, everything that they want. We compromised as well. And you can go back and look at all the various phases of that document to see where we compromised, where the union compromised, to try to come to an agreement that was workable for both parties. But there was no compromise. The, the local it, never got any more benefits than, the, than the, the, the price that you had cut down on the first meeting. That stayed the same, and then every time you kept adding that, more that more is more. That is just not true, Bruce. Yeah, that, is, not no, true. that is just not, not true. That is just not well, true. Okay, that is just my, not true. Well, I've got one of the contracts at home that say it remains at 10% the employee pay. The next time it was said fifteen percent, and, I mean, and the union agreed to that. So, so, uh, but Bruce, but Bruce, let uh, me. Tim, Tim was not we did great for us. I know that. I'll admit that. But, uh, well, but let me let me say what. So, on behalf of the town, what we what we were looking at, at sometimes. I mean, sometimes you're looking at each person or the salary weight line or the health care line, but also. We were looking at the at the global budget, right? Like add it all into the pot, all all the money, the health care money, the the retirement money, dental, the dental, the den yeah, life. the dental, the salary. Put all the money in the pot. Retirement. Right. This is what it costs the town now, and and there was absolutely a significant increase on that total pot in play. It is simply not true that the town wasn't poor. It was just moving things around and not putting more in the pot. That is absolutely just yeah, is not, not true. It is not true. The, is, and as Sharon said, we looked, we looked at the whole pot of money and where it was going to, and what that meant to the town, to the taxpayers. Right. Because we also hear from the taxpayers about they can't afford their top property. I can't tell you how many people say they can't afford their property taxes and they probably do have a really hard time. The raises for this crew would be pennies on the thousands of dollars compared to what you're, you're spending when you get fifty thousand dollars in number ten. You get uh, no, all this no. Money. Listen, it, wait it's, a minute. It's, it's no, small no, change. no. All right, I want to be clear. No town money has gone to whatever you're talking about with number ten. There was money that was put aside in a fund called the Conservation Commission Fund. That was money that was set aside for those types of projects. There is not any. Okay, okay. okay so, so I want to make, when you're making misstatements and misrepresentations, that does not help our communication. Okay, okay uh, to be but, clear. But I, what my point is, to pay this road crew additional money is, is very small change compared to the, the whole budget. I mean, we're talking, okay, let's not buy 10 loads of gravel this year and and give that money to a road crew member. I mean, and how would that we're, work we're out? We're talking uh, a very small part of the budget to give this road crew raises. 
I think the town it's tries. A dollar, it's I think a dollar an hour per man. It's two thousand dollars per man. Right. Probably. Yeah. Um, Bill has had his hand up for a while. I've been listening to you guys go back and forth, and there definitely is a communication problem. I can see it. I can hear it. And and what these guys are talking about, what I hear, is they want parity with other towns. They're not asking for their 2.1% increase. They're asking to be bumped up so there's parity, so they don't have to go somewhere else to get another job. That's what I think we, we, we have failed them for a number of years, and now we need to get, we need, we need to bring it up so that we are level with other towns or a little bit above maybe so we don't lose anybody. And then we can have the annual increases, whatever the CPI is or whatever. But I, that's where I think we've fallen behind as a town. And, and we've got to work on the communication because there's definitely a problem here. I've never seen it this bad. Um, also, we, uh, we, we've, we've got can, the, can I, the I want to respond, I want to respond to. And, and, and longest roads, and the road crew isn't any bigger than other towns, but we've got the most roads. And, and we should be paying more than other towns, not. I want to respond to Bill. We have done some research, Bill, mm -hmm. and put together and looked at different towns, it's not always apples to apples. Sometimes it's hard to come up with a, a comparison that's something that makes sense. So we, just so you know, we have done that research. I understand mm -hmm. what, what Junior said, you know, they, they, they can't eat that, they can't eat. But would, they ra well, you, would you rather not have benefits? Well, then that's a conversation. Uh, if, you, if you want to honor that uh, petition, I, I will, I'll, I'll step down on on my health to, to compare it to hmm. go, for, go to well, I, well, I think we have we have to. The town, I believe, has to offer some type of coverage. If somebody, I'm just remembering my days in the state government. If somebody didn't take the state's insurance plan, there was a form you have to sign to prove that you have insurance through I another. I don't want to lose insurance. I'm just saying, step it down to the next plan instead of go go to plan. That's that's a conversation though. I'm I'm going to just say I'm not really comfortable having that conversation no. here. We are we are right in the weeds on on um, you know pers a, a personnel issue, and we came we came to have this conversation, but not to negotiate to a conclusion because it really does involve really clear benchmarking of what are the other towns, what does it look like to add a fifth person to the crew. Um, and what's what's I personally I'm 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 not a knee-jerk person I'm a what's the big big picture person what path are we on where is this going to take us and let's have a plan that's not just not just knee-jerk but is something that we can sustain over time and explain to the taxpayers and defend you know against the the, the very clear facts and data that we have that is you know, right there in front of us, and and that that's re that's really important I, to me. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, yeah and I I, I, I want to wait, wait a minute. I want to echo what Sharon just said. We can't just sit here today and come up with something. That's why I said today is really a listening, learning perspective on things. So we will go back to the full board and try to digest this. See what we can do to com have a different comparison um, and have a plan. We can't just sit here today and say, we're going to give you this and right. we're going to take off that. We can't do that. Right. Well, I, I've got to say that above and beyond, that I'm getting 95% of the people who answer that door to sign that petition. I've got overwhelming support. Overwhelming support. Um, and yeah. I mean, and you, you, can't, you, you can't ignore that. Well, and I go back to that's one side of the and, story. And, and so many of them say, if you've got a CDL and you you get called out at 3 a.m., you should be starting at $25 an hour. And so many people say that. It's, and I'm not asking for that much, but I am asking for fair. Um, we really should, are way, way underpaid here, way underpaid. Okay. For what we, we do with our type of roads, I think we, we hear you, but when you're going door to door, remember, we can't go door to door and give the other side of the story. So you have an advantage. Uh, That's good politics, Bruce. Call. It's yeah. excellent politics. Good for you. Yep. Richard, you wanted to say something? No, 
Okay, so I think, I think we have enough information for right now. Mm -hmm. um, we had one other thing to do. Yep. Um, yeah, Denise, uh, Denise, we are... No, we, well, we're, we were supposed to be able to approve and sign the NEMRIC. We can't do that. But we can't do it because we don't have a quorum. No. No. So, we can't do that. So, all right, and... Can we, can we tentatively set another date for another meeting so that we can talk about... I'll have to check with the board. And whatever. It's really, as other people have jobs well, and, couldn't, and couldn't be here today, it's Monday, you know, any Monday evenings are generally what people have on their calendars, so I don't know how the crew feels about doing a meeting after four o'clock. Because it might have to, it might, that might be how we can get the full board. Yeah. Because every, like, for instance, today, Rick got found out yesterday, they had to be in Springfield to do a, a move for BGS. Mm -hmm. And he called me late last night to say that, Tim, I'm sorry, I can't be there because I have my job responsibilities, as you can appreciate. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we can start that process of trying to pick a date that would work. We can, do, yes, absolutely. Because, I mean, obviously we need to get this. We no. can't, yeah, we, but we can't do it without the, we, we can't set a date without the full. Yeah. I understand, but we can start thinking yes. about a date to yes. get the whole board and all of us together. Absolutely. And, and start trying to iron this out. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm going, and we have, and we, I'm going to repeat something you guys have heard before, but maybe it's worth reminding you. Um, feel, be, be proactive with the board, right? I mean, you guys know that we meet Monday nights. We are working really hard to have concise meetings, but let us know. We'd like half an hour with the select board on Monday night X. Uh, all of us can be there at seven o'clock. And here's great. A, and here's a document to help to help us all. This is what we know about what's comparable in other towns. Do some research, mm -hmm. uh, as as we will. I did. Mm -hmm. So put it on. You know, put it. But the whole thing. Put it, put it. The whole thing. Put it in writing so that we have it. Select board can review it individually at home prior to the meeting, and then we, we can't have a good conversation if you're just throwing these numbers out at us and saying that this town gets this much and this town has that insurance. Show us. We're willing to work with you. And, and well, and, and I want to repeat, Bruce. Bruce, the, the whole story is, and what is the health benefit package? What is the, the HSA? You can even find out what the health benefit package is and not learn about the HSA. So you could have the exact same package. And what Denise mentioned, where, where Callis pays every out-of-pocket expense that you have on top of the... the Nine, yeah, that's 90-10 right now. The, the 90, town pays 90, you pay 10. But then you, we pay the deductibles, we pay the, the co-insurance, we, you know, so... So you pay the 10%, but we pay everything else. That you wouldn't even find out with another town without asking the questions. And there's a budget that goes with that. So that's what I'm talking about when I say the whole, the whole picture is you know, the whole story, not just the salary number. Right. All right, so Jacob mentioned to me the other day, if you were to offer him $20 an hour, he may stay, but he's only got a week left, so mm -hmm. you will have to act on that immediately if you want to keep him. Okay. But, uh, well, we're going to be having an exit interview with Jacob as soon as we're done with this. Cool. Yep. Richard? You said you wanted numbers. So does that mean that the study that you, that you did already, that's a public document? That the one that we publicized? Order? That that's helpful, but that was that, that is not valid. Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. It's that not was that part it, of the negotiations. It's well, in it, are the numbers valid? Yes. But are you accepting the numbers? Richard, let me let me let me say yeah. what I was trying to say about that. So, in the context of negotiations, we gather that information okay. because it's other union towns. So, so we wanted to understand even before we got numbers from the union 
what does it look like to them? Kind of where are we headed? Which in my mind is honestly very, it's, and, it, and it's just some numbers. It's just salary numbers. It's not even necessarily the whole picture. Let me finish, please. And then the other, so if, if we were gathering what I'll call benchmark data, it would be, it, you know, we're going to have to have that conversation. What is the right benchmark? And, and by that I mean which towns? Um, which towns are the right towns? What are the pieces of data we need? And the reason it's important to have that conversation, and I think that's a good one to have with the, the crew, because, because when somebody's unhappy, you can go shopping for the right numbers. So if we haven't agreed in advance, okay, here's the right towns to compare ourselves to, and here's the whole lineup of benefits, and we lock that in and say, over time, this is who we check in to see what's going on. Otherwise, Bruce is going out shopping for numbers, I'm going out shopping for numbers, everybody's got the story they like. So instead we have to start with what is the right benchmark, what are the right towns, what's the list of benefits, lock that in, write it down, and, and keep that moving forward as kind of our you know, line in the, in the middle, if that makes any sense. Makes sense to me. Yeah, so, so the, that's, that's, those are union towns, and some of them are very far away. So I don't, I don't think of them yeah. as good benchmarking. Your yeah, there's... Your document says some of them are not here. I can, I'm having a hard time hearing. Your document says some of the towns in the survey were not unionized. Right, some are not. But, some are not. But that's a different question than whether we, whether we say, okay, is this it? Are these our benchmark numbers that we're going to keep and stay focused on moving forward? And at this point, it doesn't matter if they're union or not. We can, we should be looking at surrounding comparable towns. Right, but but agree on what they are because again, right. you can always go shopping for the numbers you want. So if we're looking at Cabot, Woodbury, Marshfield, Plainfield, then that's the same number of towns we should all agree on to be looking at. Does that make sense? Right, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense to me, Denise. It makes sense to but me, too. There's many other factors. I mean, right. they have shorter roads. They have maybe a small group or larger group or whatever. But, yeah. but, there's but, many, many factors. Right. But we're also looking, as you heard earlier, for a fifth person right. to cut down on the, what do you guys call them, rodeos, I learned. Yeah. I've learned so many new terms. Right. The road, cut down on the rodeos, rodeos. Is that right? Yeah. Cut down on the time mm -hmm. it takes to do a right. rodeo right. so that the time out on the road is not as long because we have a policy where you're, you know, you need to get so much sleep. I'm glad you said rodeo. This is what Jacob and I won at the uh, 2019. 2019 snowplow rodeo. Is that what's really Best called? in the state right here. Yeah. Snowplow rodeo. rodeo? Cool. It, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. That's very impressive. Yep. Thank yep. you for showing it to us. Yep, but but the point that um, you just made about the you know how many miles of road, I think it would be a really good conversation to ask ourselves where does that fit in in how we kind of set up a formula for what we pay you because you're I agree that skill should be considered and we pay you by the hour, but miles of road drives how many hours and it and it probably how many people right but maybe not necessarily having a lot of influence on what we pay you. So that's a conversation that I really look forward to having with you guys. Another and and then the other let me one, is, one, one, one minute Bruce because part of what we've been hearing for a while and is why we put in the extra in the in the budget the extra money for a fifth person was exactly what you're saying that the rodeos are too long Right. So we heard we heard you, yes. and put that in the in the budget. Um, the other things that, that bothers me is besides the low wages is the other things that you were were going to impose on that uh, contract. Which um, you talked about sending us home after plowing means our, we lose our OT, which it knocks our wages down. You, you talked about Friday coverage, which, which is really unnecessary because we get more done in four day work week. And I don't know, how many times have we had to get called out since I've been here on Friday because of 
trees down. Or, I mean, it's very, very, very rare. So the farm coverage is, is not uh, a good thing. I mean, and, and of course, you, you talked about that being uh, uh, on, because of a fifth employee that, that we would get the farm coverage. It'd still be a hassle for you because then you'd have a, a crew of two one day and a crew of two on the other day or whatever. Um, and all these other things that you want to impose, the going from 10 to 15% copay, um, um, all these things that you won't want to do impose on us that, uh, that, uh, you, that I think you still will, um, that, but that's, that, that's your intent, so that's going to cut into it too. It's, it's, uh, um, I, and these are all things that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. We've got a, a good plan right here. It's working. There's, there's no reason to change it. It's, it's, uh, right. and, I mean, and you've got support here, but we also hear from members of the town that may not see uh, things the same way as these folks do. Mm -hmm. No, so, but but all right. So so you know we, we have to look at we have to look at both and sides. See, but uh, I, I, I believe that uh, a good share of the people would agree with me and not not. Uh, I mean, Obviously, we're going to work Fridays in the winter because it's necessary. But, um, and I also asked for uh, a couple more holidays, uh, uh, President's Day and Martin Luther King Day, and, and uh, you wouldn't go along with that. You I think I did that. Yeah. For a I forget. Of how, many, how many paid holidays do we give you now? Ten? Thirteen. Thirteen? Thirteen paid holidays? And, and, and the day after Thanksgiving, right. it's nothing to anyone, so we can exchange that. But, but, uh, Maybe that's um, a, maybe so a this yep. year, uh, both President's Day and Martin Luther King Day, there was no snow. Wouldn't have work. We would have had a rest. So uh, it's it's not going to cost the town a great deal. You know, yes, of course, it's going to happen some years, but this year it wasn't. They could have could have been so the, so Bruce says we're gathering data and building a benchmark. We should include that. Number of paid holidays. Mm -hmm. um, and we should also find out how many towns, when somebody takes sick leave, pay overtime. Oh, good one. Yeah. Right. So, um, so, so all of these things become part of some of them are clear benefits, you know, dental coverage. Some of them are benefits that have particular value to to you, perhaps having a having a four day work week in the summer, um, having Friday off after Thanksgiving, not not of value. Uh, Thirteen paid holidays a year, maybe not enough. I think all of these things can you know, can come into the discussion. But know that as one member of the select board, I'm always going to be looking at what's the big picture, what's the cost of the town, what can the town afford and absorb in terms of a market adjustment so that you're getting an hourly rate that's more, but how does that fit against all the other things that we're talking about? It really has to be a whole picture, not solving for just one little piece. And I think when we meet, we need to identify those pieces. All those things. All these, all these things. Well, that's how. You don't like that idea. You don't want to. You don't want to. I've been asking for those two holidays for three years now. I'm not. I, I'm Bruce. I'm not talking about that specifically. I'm talking about looking at comparable data, so that we have a basis to say when we raise people's taxes mm -hmm. to pay the road crew more, we pay raise people's taxes to add a fifth person. We can justify it, and we have information that we can say, well, here, it's right here. Mm -hmm. Other towns give it, give their road crew 15 paid holidays. That's why we're doing it. And we're doing it in the context of, you know, other things that are also in alignment. If that's true, we don't have those facts. And as the select board, that is our job, to look at that, to look at all the data, to look at all the issues, to hear from both sides, supportive or not supportive, the people that complain about the roads, and people are always going to complain. Nobody's ever going to be totally 100% happy. Trust me, I know that from being on the select board. Um, but those are things the select board, we can't do it in a silo or in a vacuum. We have to look at this bigger picture. 
or else we wouldn't be doing our volunteer jobs. Right. Yeah, so I want you to think about and maybe appreciate that as volunteers, we are trying. We are really trying very okay. hard. Um, like uh, my petition asked in, and these guys say, we should be above average. When it all comes down to it, because of our loads, because of my skills, because of all these things, this crew ought to be paid above the average line. And that's what we will look at. Okay, thank you. So the, Bill? So the other thing that I think you need to take into consideration. Well, Bill was going to be first, but go ahead, Toby. Go ahead, Toby. No, I'll, I'll, I'll follow. Um, is experience. And right now, there's no step for anybody Toby's to out. say, oh, you in two years, is. I'm going to get a raise because I've stayed here two years, mm -hmm. or I've been here five years, yeah. or I've been here 10 years. I know some places give longevity. Raises or well, it's not, it's not raises. It's like it's a reward for long service and experience doing the well, job what, that right. everybody What I'm saying is, good. and I'm agreeing with you right. about longevity and the importance of that. Right. And so you, you should consider setting up a, a schedule that says after five years, you're going to get a $3 raise or whatever because you've earned enough in your experience mm -hmm. with this town and its needs that, because it, Bruce is sitting here and he has not seen a penny raise other than the 2.1% cost of living increase. So for him, he has actually not had a raise in three years. Wait, hang on. 2.1 is not cost of living. 1.1 was cost of living. One the 1% between 1.1 and... So then you gave him a 1% raise. <laughs> well, no, we, we, have a, we have a formula that we have adopted mm -hmm. as a board to respect the taxpayers' dollars, that we will look at the CPI, because that is, we can't just, we don't want, we can't just pull a number out of the air that is suitable to Bruce. No, but it's, it's, Can I finish? We can't just pull a number out of the air. We have to have a formula and a way to explain and justify the raises that we are giving. We can't just pull a number out of the air. Well, it's right. not a number. You should sit down and say, so after five years, how much more is that person that valuable to the town of Cows Road than he was five years before when he started? Right. So Toby Jacob has two years, three years now? Three and a half. Four years. Okay, so if he were looking at, in my fifth year, I'm going to get a $2 raise because the select board has set up this standard of mm -hmm. experience and longevity there's a reward system there. There's no reward right now. There's nothing for them to look at other than what do I get July 1st. Okay, that, we'll that needs to be an important part of why people stay at a certain job because there's a benefit in the future for them staying and having Has a there ever there. been in Calus though? I, off, I suggested one of those seven or eight years ago. Did you develop board. a model maybe that you have somewhere that you could pass along to us? Yeah, do you have something that I you can develop? give you a model, but I mean, essentially, you need to uh, you need to accept that idea and say, "Hey, if you stay five or t if you get to ten years, look at what look at that golden golden it, package out gold there watch. that, that it, to guarantee because we trust that you've experienced it's it's still good experience, but it's yeah. it still has to fit. It still has to fit totally within, understood, but within benchmarking. I agree. Um, you have to look at other towns. And yes. How long they keep their employees? We will. It's ten or fifteen years turnover, and we're getting what three years turnover? I mean, it's it. They keep their help. We will look into that. And as I was saying when Toby was talking, um, as one board member, I will ask that we look at longevity because I know in other places they do that. And it does give people something to look forward to. Right. But that has to be a board decision. There has to be a formula that works so that we can apply it to everybody. And, and it has to be clear that, that that's what we're doing. I think right. that I think that sometimes, you know, like what Toby just said, that we gave you uh, CPI 2.1, see how very quickly the, the clarity of what's happening gets lost in translation. So it does. And so, and so, you know, having the framework and having a clear framework that's documented and predictable and, and applied consistently 
is really, really important. Yeah. Uh, Bill? And then we're going to wrap up. Comment and a quick uh, kind of question. Um, thank you both for coming. You're welcome. Thank you You're guys welcome. For, for being here. Um, it's hard to hear sometimes what somebody's saying. You guys got to be patient because they, they have work to do and come back to you. So, you know, there's going to be some back and forth, but I know you guys want it right now. It's probably not going to happen right now. No, but, we have to have time. But they, they need some time, but you know, you need to keep their feet to the fire too. So I know this needs to be more conversation. Yeah. And my question was, um, when do you guys go back to in-person at the town hall? We are right now. We already have. Oh, you are? Yeah. yeah, the governor didn't give us much notice and we had to scramble oh. to use the town hall to come up with some technology so that we could still do Zoom for some people that still wanted to do Zoom and still do in-person meetings, but we've got to put some rugs and curtains and different things like that in the town hall because of the acoustics are terrible. We had a really hard time hearing Monday night. So we've got some work to do. But I would also encourage you all to mm -hmm. look at our agendas mm -hmm. and see what is on there and the workload that this volunteer board does for the town. One of the things I want to say around that is some of this work doesn't have to be done by select board people. Right. One of the things we're trying to do more of so that we can get more done is in, um, not diversify, but um, divide and conquer. Delegate. Delegate. So, so one possibility that the whole board will decide on is that one of us takes the lead on this information gathering. And if that's the case, there's a lot of opportunity for somebody, somebody who's not on the select board to partner and do a lot of work to support the board. Or we, or we don't even have to have a board member. Or it doesn't even, but we, we, we would want to be monitoring and giving information about what we would like to see as comparable, but right. there might be an opportunity for some of you supporters to help and we could get it done faster. Right. Right. So the, but the board would have to decide that we're not going to do that today, right. but that's an opportunity for people to get involved and to help. Mm -hmm. But we're going to wrap up now because we want to meet with Jacob. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. everyone. Yep. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for showing us that.